Ladies and gentlemen, drop a voicemail Cup of four Q's, smacky to likey, hitty your sister's sub sub. <sighs> oh, if you don't feel this song, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you if you're not feeling this song. I'm ravishing, you son of a bitch. I'm ravishing, baby. Oh, he's ravishing. Chisel. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the one, the only All Rise. First and foremost, I hope everybody is doing very, very well today. Guys, we are just days now. You can even sit there and go. You can count down the hours. We are right there. For New York Yankee baseball to make a triumphant return. And Lord have mercy on me. Please do not allow it to be anything like last season. Because nobody wants to deal with what we dealt with last year. We want to have a very strong year this year. A fun season for the Yankees. 
And let's get right into some of the news today. As you guys already know, of course, please go ahead, smacky that likey, hitty the subby, drop a voicemail, do all that fun stuff that you guys know to do. Let me get the voicemail uh, number popped up. Bada bing, bada boom ski. There it is. 804-592-6160. There it is. That is the number. It's right there for you guys. Drop your voicemails. Let's discuss some New York Yankee Abesa de Ball, okay? Yankees are playing again in Mexico City today. It is the last exhibition. It's the last exhibition. They're done. Then they get ready to head out to Houston and play a little ball game. But first and foremost, we did have some news early this morning via Joel Sherman. Let me switch on over to that. Clayton Beater told me he was informed he has made the Yankee roster. This is something that me and Francis talked about on Designated Spitters last night, uh, that Clayton Beater is on the 40-man roster, and there's a very real chance that he would indeed make the Yankees team. And indeed, Clayton Beater, who looked fan friggin tastic you can make a strong argument that Luis Heal... And Clayton Beater were the best two pitchers in the Yankee spring training mix overall. They were both absolutely phenomenal. And rightfully so, both of these guys make the club. <clears throat> rightfully so, they make the club well deserved that they do. And now it's getting into the time of it being the roster crunch. Who is going to make the final team? Now, I've been doing some crunching on this myself. And I had a scary thought today. That scary thought that I had today was that, is there a way that Nick Birdie doesn't make this team? And I don't know how the Yankees let that happen. Nick Birdie, I believe, has an opt-out in April. Meaning if he doesn't make this team, he gets some, some performances in AAA. If he's healthy, he's going to be in a major league bullpen. The Yankees cannot let this guy slide and get away from them that would be batshit crazy. But then again, the Yankees have done some stupid shit before in the past. Yankees Kyle had a member chat. Let me get a, a couple of member chats here. Let's get to those real fast. You're the best around. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down. You're the best. Yankees Kyle says, Pete, you are the voice of my beloved New York Yankees, my friend. And don't change a thing. NYYU to the moon. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you to like hitting this up. Jacob Patrusi says, what up, Pete? And salute to the best community on YouTube. Pete, any chance a guy like Groshans makes the team with DJ LeMayo injury? See y'all on 420. Um, I don't know about Groshans. We'll talk about that a little bit. I think Jermai, Jermai Jones may have a better shot at making the team than him. But we'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, Macho King, that's going to be a big topic on nights at the round table because I have my, obviously, I have my concerns about Aaron Boone. I have my concerns about Booney. But I was looking this over, and the Yankees probably go with 13 pitchers. Five of those guys, of course, will be starters. So that leaves only a few options. Beater, we know, made a team. Ferguson has made the team. Gonzalez is going to make the team. Ian Hamilton's going to make the team. Clay Holmes will make the team. Jonathan Loisega is going to make the team. I don't think he should. I'd do like a little phantom IL and leave the guy in spring training for a little longer, to be honest with you. Luke Weaver, I believe, signed a major league contract, so he's going to be on the team. And then I think it's Nick Birdie. But, but, what's going on with Tommy Canely? Have the Yankees communicated this at all? My understanding is Tommy Canely is not going to start on the big league club. My understanding was Canely has more work to do. So I don't expect Tommy Canely to be on the opening day roster. I thought that was all locked in. If that's the case, there's no way Nick Birdie doesn't make this club, in my opinion. He will be that final spot, which again will give you a bullpen to start the year of Beater, Ferguson, Gonzalez, Hamilton, Clay Holmes, Jonathan Loisega, Luke Weaver, and Nick Birdie. I don't think Santana is going to make the team FL Diver. Um, I was reading an article yesterday 
that said he would probably be sent down and his opt-out, I think, is until June, I want to say. Don't quote me on that, but I do think it was June. Nick Birdie had the faster opt-out, which was in April. And if you're the New York Yankees, there is no way in hell you cannot let an arm like Nick Birdie just slip away and not be a part of your team this year. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's, ah, you can wait a little bit. No. With a guy like this, I put him out there immediately and let him go. Dennis Santana is a guy who I like Santana a lot. I think Santana's really, really good. He has fantastic stuff. I think what they're doing with that is they're going to allow him to kind of show that he's for real in the minor leagues and then potentially bring him up. Because it's not like the Yankees are going to use more pitchers. They're going to. I think Joe Sherman even put out an article talking about they might start with Beater for the first run through, maybe the first month, and then send him back down as they feel like uh, their starters could could get them through a few innings. But Beater is a very safe bet that, that, that he should have made this team. And I, I do want to highlight Clayton Beater a little bit real quickly. I'm going to get him pulled up here for you guys so we can look at him together. Clayton Beater was phenomenal. I want to shout out John Brophy, who has done an amazing job in, in his short stint right now with NYYU. He, he said flat out, I've seen this guy for a long time. This is the best I ever remember Clayton Beater looking. And if you look at his stuff overall, you switch the screen here. Let me get my big, big ass head off the screen. My bad, guys. There we go. You look at his numbers, a 3.18 ERA, five games, two of those being a starter. So he's got some time to kind of back up starting pitchers in this role. 17 innings pitched, 17 strikeouts. Clayton Beater been thrown in the high, the mid to high 90s, 95, 96. He's touched 97, and he has a fantastic slider. This is a guy you want coming out of your bullpen. Six foot two, 220, repeats his delivery extremely well. There's a lot of people that got concerned about Clayton Beater being a starter. I don't think majority of people out there would have much concern about Clayton Beater coming out of your bullpen for two innings, three innings. He can go through a lineup. There's no denying that he has everything he needs. Q is right. He also looks a bit like Garrett Cole. That's a plus. Why the hell not? Because look, Cole is missing right now. So we got like mini version of Cole on the club. I'll take it. Why the hell not? But Clayton Beater, rightfully so, is on the club. He makes this team. And I like, this is something I talk about every friggin' year with this club. I like, let me make this point very friggin' clear to everybody out there. The Yankees turned me into Pete Dombrowski, not the other way around, okay? Because for years, the New York Yankees would refuse to put guys like Clayton Beater on the roster, like Anthony Volpe, like Austin Wells. They would find some older veteran to go, just put him on there. The Yankees are finally, finally making the real commitment to younger players and playing them. They show up and show out. They put them on the team. That is the way it works. That makes fans more confident in our system of developing prospects. This is what we've all been asking for. Oh, you're not going to play Dominguez? Well, then trade them because this is what we've always done. Trade the guys then. Get us guys that are going to win now. The Yankees, since 2019, Dane brings this up a lot, have made a major difference in their minor league system. And you can see it. Trust me, guys, I'm right there with you. Not all these guys are going to pan out. Not every one of them are going to be great. But by all means, they're better than a lot of options out there. And this is one of the big problems I have had with the Yankees for years, and we all have had with the Yankees for years. Josh Donaldson hitting 182. Oswald Peraza on one of the hottest streaks he's ever been on in AAA. Where does he stay? In AAA. That's my problem with this club. And it looks like they are starting to fully recognize baseball itself is seeing minor leaguers have shorter stints in the minors 
when they look like they are ready. And something that Yankees Farm, Los just said, I've been saying this for a long time now. The Yankees have to offset cost for guys like Judge, Cole, Soto, and whoever else they may sign that they need to. Maybe Glaber. They need young players on the 26-man roster. That's how this works. So for all the people the Yankees can't afford, they can't, yes, they can. Yes, they can. They can afford all of it. They have built a strong system. To their credit, I always talk about this. We'll call them out for their bullshit, but I'll also tip the cap for the New York Yankees for doing the job that they have done with their current crop. I know people want to bring up Andy Phillips. I know people want to bring up Eric Duncan. I know people want to bring up Austin Jackson. I know people want to bring up uh, Jesus Montero. Estevan Floriel. I know we all want to do that because it pains us. We know it. We've seen it. But I am here to tell you all that this crop, these guys coming up, these guys that have come up, they are different. Whether you believe that or not, I'm as George Steinbrenner as George Steinbrenner gets. I'm Pete Dombrowski. I am. I want my team to win now. But another reason why I want to go out there and look to trade some players and look to add to this club is because I want this team to be the best it could be. I want to win now. I don't want to care about winning in 2025, 2026. I focus on what is ahead of me. But the New York Yankees have done an amazing job. Truly. I want to tip my cap to them. Of putting a good young crop together. We know guys like Spencer Jones are on the way. Hell, guys like Jared Cerna that people aren't talking about. Guys like Luis Cerna who's starting today. That the majority of you probably don't even know about. Is a starting pitching prospect that you may want to keep your eyes on. A lot of people aren't talking about these guys. They're not talking about all of them. You're not hearing all the time about Henry Lalane. They're not hearing all the time about Carlos LaGrange. They're not hearing about these guys. The Yankees have so much youth coming up that if you're in the system, put yourself as a young player in the Yankees minor league system, right? Think about this for a second. You're seeing your friends make this club. Beater, Volpe, whatever the list is. Austin Wells. You see all these guys. Don't you think to yourself, hey, wow, this is different. I got a chance with this team. I could make the New York Yankees. I could be on this club. I can actually do it. That's got to be a great feeling for the young players. The Yankees didn't go out there and sign somebody off the waiver wire just because they didn't want Clayton Beater making it in the bullpen. They let the kids play. We saw yesterday in the, in, in, in the, in the Diablos game. The kids put it together in the ninth inning to score some runs. Carlos Navarez is a guy a lot of people's eyes have opened up to. Even manager Aaron Boone called him Trevi 2.0. Macho King says it right there, and he's spot on. This is the best the farm has been since the early 90s. No doubt about it. And it's it's very it's a very exciting time. John Brophy in the chat says, I've been watching the Tampa Yankees slash Tarpon since 2013, and I've seen so many guys come through Tampa. This is the most exciting time I can ever remember. That means a lot. That means a lot. That means a lot. No question about it. It's a new Pete Dombrowski. Look, I'm still willing to trade anybody. I still would have made the trade for Dylan Cease. I know there's many people out here that's like, no, Pete, you can't do it. I talked about Dylan Cease and Moncada for a while. I know a lot of people said, nah, come on, Pete, don't make that trade. You wouldn't do that. Why would you make that trade? Let me tell you something. The Yankees right now would be in a lot better position if they did. I'm just saying. Speaking of trades, we can move on from that. Speaking of trades, let me grab a little cup of 4Q real quick. 
Ah, ah, ah. Speaking of trades, I want to talk about this. Allergy season over here, folks. The allergies beat the shit out of me. But there has been a little bit of talk, and I think we all kind of know where I'm going here. I do believe that the Yankees are going to make a trade. And I'm not saying this is going to be, oh my God, I can't believe the New York Yankees made this deal. Wow, it's such a big move. I do believe that Ben Rordvet is going to be dealt. Um, I do believe it will be a trade. I don't think it's going to be a straight out, let him go somewhere. I think the Yankees are probably still looking for a utility infielder. We've talked about this a lot. I think Ron Marinaccio could be traded. Becker, very, very, very good point there. I think Marinaccio could be moved. I think uh, Ben Rordvet could be moved. Maybe a surprising name out of the pen could potentially be moved to make up for somebody else. Maybe a Danny Santana could be moved considering he's had such a solid spring. Who knows? But I do believe the Yankees make a move. I don't expect Ben Rordvet to make this team. He even said the other day, yeah, Los with a great point. Nick Ramirez, who I shit on Nick Ramirez. I joke around about Nick Ramirez. He finds ways to get guys out. If I'm a club out there and I need a lefty reliever, I tell you this right now. I tell you this. I tell you this. I'd bring Nick Ramirez on board. I'm not kidding. I'd bring Nick Ramirez on board. Cookie crumbles on his jersey and all. I'd bring him right on board. No problem. No problem. Bring him right in. But Ben Rordvet basically said the other day he could kind of see the writing on the wall, right? He could kind of look around and go, hey, guys, I'm I'm probably going to be moved, uh, obviously. We kind of got Trevi and Austin Wells. I mean, I don't have a place here. He's going to go ahead and likely be moved very soon. Is that move for a utility player? Very possible. Uh, who knows exactly what it's going to be, but I'm telling you now, I do think the Yankees got some moves up their sleeves. I I've been saying for a while, I don't believe the utility player is on this team. I think it's going to be somebody that's maybe a late release, maybe somebody who's not going to make the club. Maybe a guy a team feels like could make their club, but they need a backup catcher, and they do a little swap with the Yankees for Ben Rortvet. I think that's very possible. I think maybe the Yankees move a relief pitcher for a, a bench piece. I think all of that is truly on the table. Um, I'm tired, says Trey Loisega. Ha, huh, man, we can go down the path of, of Jonathan Loisega a little bit. Um, yeah, hey, Los, Gio Urshela. Gio Urshela would be a great, great addition to the New York Yankees right now. You know, the Yankees at the moment right now, the way we look at it is Oswaldo Cabrera is going to be the starting third baseman. And indeed, he's hit better as of late. There's no denying that. I watch these games. Oswaldo Cabrera has looked better as of late. He has. He's looked better as of late. Is he, you know, the guy you want to see at third base every day? I ask you guys that question because I'd say no. I don't think so. I don't think he's deserved anything to be out there every day. Great guy. We all want to see him succeed. We all want to see him succeed. Hasn't really done it. DJ LeMayu, who the hell knows when he's going to come back? Bone bruises are not an easy thing to come back from. It's just simply one of those things where it's take your time. You don't know. You got to wait. Caleb Durbin is a name I like a lot. I don't know if he's ready. Played third base the other day. Got a very strong arm. Very good speed. I don't know if he makes the club. I doubt it. I don't think the Yankees necessarily bump him up that quick. But Jonathan Lewisick is one of those guys where he got the stuff. And you know he has the stuff. He got it. He got the velo. He got the movement. He got all that. But the thing about Jonathan Lewisiga is, can he put it all together again? I'll be honest with you, I am very concerned about Jonathan Lewisiga. I'm also very concerned about Jonathan Lewisiga being a late inning reliever or a multi inning reliever for the New York Yankees. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it, and I think it is a very poor strategy if the New York Yankees do choose to put him in that role of a multi-inning guy. I think that's a very bad idea. When you got Luke Weaver, 
when you got Clayton Beater, who the Yankees may be utilizing as a guy to back up a Luis Hill and say, hey, his outings, be prepared. You're probably going to come in. Depending on if you believe the whole, we don't have an innings crunch on Luis Hill. Maybe the Yankees are really serious about how he feels. Will his stuff diminish? All these questions are going to be answered. That's the beautiful thing. But, as again, my good friend Los just says, should be made to earn his place back. Agreed 150%. I always say this. I don't think certain positions should just be given to players. Friendly competition on a club is a very good thing. Putting together the best team possible based off how these guys performed is a very real thing. There's been just about every reliever that has a chance of making the Yankees have pitched better than Jonathan Loisega. Jonathan Loisega has just opened eyes in the past. So you're thinking, can he get back to that? We'll see. We'll see if he can. But guys, the voicemail line is open. 804-592-6160. You guys have already left us with a lot of voicemails. So let's do this. Let's get into the first couple. Hey, how you doing, NYY Underground? Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is right now. Yeah, it's the <laughs> evening. Anyway, uh, I see Aaron Boone um, has said that Oswaldo Cabrera is probably going to be the opening day third baseman. Yeah. Because Jay is a lot. Uh, and I have come up with the reason why the Yankees struggle. It's because Aaron Boone sucks. He's a shit. The man has no idea what he's doing. He gets bullied by umpires. He bakes cookies. He gets cookie crumbs on Nick Ramirez's shirt because he's hand feeding him. Then I'm done with the guy. All right, that's all I got to say. I'm disgusted with Aaron Boone. But let's go. Let's get number 28. Well, I'm going to make it a little better for you, my friend. You know, I just felt like it was kind of bullying, frankly. Play it again. You know, I just felt like it was kind of bullying, frankly. As Mr. Bubbles himself, our good old Booney. You know, he's our boonie, though. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, man? He's our boonie. We got to, you know, try to defend this son of a bitch a little bit. But I always say, if anybody's going to talk about boon, let it be us. All right? No other fans. You don't get the chance to. You don't get the chance to think you can insult boonie. We do that. Okay? Only the Yankee fans get a chance to do that. All right? Thank you for being a friend. Connor O'Neill says, why did Meredith just say Beater is not official yet? I got no idea, maybe. I have no idea. I did not see that. I did not see that. But guys, do me a favor. Smacky that likey. Hitty the subby. Oh, you bet your ass I do. Tommy likey. Tommy want wingy. All right, let's keep the voicemails going, folks. At your mother's house. Gabagoo. Yeah. Gabagoo. Ask Come on. your mother's house. Yeah. Gabagoo. Gabagoo. Oh, sorry. Sorry I to break out saying. in song like that. Uh, this is Joey from the Bronxy Bronxy. But your catchphrases are rubbing off on me, man. I'm starting <laughs> to use them in my daily language. People don't understand what I'm saying. They're like, well, what are you talking about? And I'll be like, shut up and itch your sister sub sub. <laughs> and just looking at each other like he going crazy. But anyway, uh, looks like we dodged a bullet with that Yamamoto thing, huh? <laughs> He's a bust. That's what he is. Unless, unless, of course, He's thrown the game because his friend Otani's got money on it. Oof. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm done with spring training. Uh, I've been suffering from a, mentally suffering from a uh, mid-spring beating for a while now. So I'm ready for this season to start. Mm. And uh, the guys are looking good. There are a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of issues, coal, this, that, the other. But all in all, I'm cautiously optimistic. Let the games begin. All right, I'm ready for the regular season. So let's go, Yankees. 
Let's go, Yankees. Let's go get them, boys. Let's give them hell. All right. Talk to you later. Joey from the Bronx, always with great voicemails. I love at your mother's. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a little crazy, man. I hear All Rise, the song, and I don't know. It just... I feel like the song, the All Rise song, needs a little gabagool in it. I mean, everything's better with a little gabagool, but somebody asked if I still have the veal parmesan. I do. Veal parmesan sandwich. Fuck you. There you go. And guys, by the way, I do got that. Where's it at? There it is. I do got the 4Q right here. You guys already know. Visit 4QCoffee.com and get yourself a cup of 4Q. Great coffee. Bad attitude, baby. Oh, we'll get to another voicemail here. Here we go. It's the one and only Macho King in the house. Cup of coffee in the big time, yeah. Cup of coffee in the big time. Yeah, let me tell you something, man. There's nothing better than that. If you guys don't get enjoyment out of that, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you if you don't get enjoyment from Macho King, man. Stay stay macho, man. Stay macho tees are in the works, folks. Stay macho tees are in the works. We're working on those. We're going to get those out to you as soon as we can. I promise you with that. And guys, by the way, speaking of merchandise... If you go to um, nyyunderground.com now, go to our shop. We do have a promo code available due to NYYU Day coming up, and that is the code, NYYU Day. You get 15% off your order um, at nyyunderground.com. If you're coming to the event, rock that merch. We are vlogging. We are going to be vlogging. If anybody is, If anybody wants to show off the merch, be like, hey, put me on the website. You let us know. We'll get some pictures of you in the merch. Put you on the website. We're starting to do that more with all of our merchandise. Because again, we don't need these little, you know, fake models and all that. We are models, baby. You want to know why? Because what? He's simply ravishing. That's why right there, baby. Because we at NYYU are simply friggin' ravishing, okay? It's that damn simple. Oh, speaking of another goat of... The voicemails. Here's another one. Hey, Pete, your boy Simon calling from Bella Vista in New Haven, Connecticut. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm so excited. The rotation's all set. Our lineup is good. I can't wait for baseball season. Now batting for the New York Yankees, the team captain, number 99, the gift from God, Aaron Judge. He's a gift from God, yeah. Anyway, Pete, I'm so excited, and this is going to be the year of the Yanks. This is our year, Pete. I can feel it in my bones. Okay, and tell Macho, tell Macho I'm with him all the way, man. Oh, yeah. Well, rock on, Pete. NYY Underground forever. Sla- slappy the subby. Hitty, hitty the subby, slappy the likey. And uh, rock on, Pete, and uh, have a good day. Bye. I mean, that last part needs a little bit of work, but great job overall, Simon. I mean, look, giving shout-outs to Mach. Got a little work to do on that one, but other than that, it was good. Ah, that's a good voicemail. I like that voicemail. Uh, it's a little work on the slappy the likey, hitting the subby, but it's okay. It happens. Yeah, you gotta do. I ain't gonna do. 
these type of things, uh, these type of things in life happen. Uh, here's a little update right here from Gary Phillips. Let's switch on over here. He says, uh, Clayton Beater on relieving. I don't mind it. I've done it before. Obviously, everyone wants to be a starter, but there's a way to help the team as a reliever, then I'm all for it. Of course, Clayton Beater having the right mindset uh, for what this team needs currently right now. And again, I am just awaiting and hoping that Nick Birdie does make the team. I've been high on Nick Birdie for many, many years. He has just never been healthy, unfortunately. But I, I am very, very excited for Nick Birdie to be on this club. I hope he makes it. Guy comes from an awesome family. Um, really changed the arm slot a bit. Hopefully that keeps him on the field longer. But you don't let that stuff walk away if, if you're the New York Yankees. You got to find a spot for Nick Birdie on this club. There's no way you could let 97, 98, 99, even 100 miles an hour with an absolutely filthy slider walk off this team. And a guy who has had trials and tribulations and probably has it all up here because of the experience that he's had with injuries, with staying on the field and being on clubs and not being able to stick because he's had injuries. I, I just feel like you got to figure out a way to ensure that he is on the club. Uh, before we get into more voicemails, I want to talk about this because this is from Chris Kirshner uh, from The Athletic. This was a great article on who Juan Soto really is. We saw that Randy Miller, of course, Randy Miller, decided to, to put something out regarding Juan Soto and basically said that the team's going to have to stay on top of him because he doesn't always hustle and um, he gets lackadaisical in the outfield and he misses plays. And it just felt like an unnecessary hit piece because maybe you needed some people to look at your article. I don't know. But it really came across as a bit of an unnecessary hit piece, in my opinion. I'm not saying don't write about this stuff if it's a legitimate concern. But here's what I'll say. If it happens during the year and we all see it, it's fair game. Write about it. But to try to throw a wrench into what has been happening right now with Soto being a Yankee, I think there's been so much awesome stuff going on with Soto as a Yankee. You see him hugging Jason Dominguez in the outfield. You know, you, you, you see all the stuff that he decided that I wanted to do. Um, going to the Yankees complex to meet their prospects in Dominican Republic. It's something that the Yankees didn't ask. It's something that Soto wanted to do. And, you know, it, it's uh, Brophy just said it here. Where was it at? I just saw John Brophy said it. Soto was such a good guy with the prospects. Uh, they needed the Latin guy to look up to, and they got the best one out there. And that is so spot on. We talked about this when we originally saw the footage, but good for Chris Kirshner. Because he wrote an article, and to sum it up, basically right here, he says, Juan Soto's first order of business as a Yankee was visiting the team's Dominican Academy. He met with each player, coach, and staff member. I just feel part of them. I'm part of the Yankees. I want to give them 100%. I want to give them 100%. And I think that is such an important statement that a lot of people, for whatever reason, for whatever reason it is, Choose to not listen to. I think Soto is about as perfect a fit for the New York Yankees as a player can get. I've been saying this since his days on the Nationals. I got videos out there. You go look them up. About Soto's a guy the Yankees have to get if he's available. I don't care who you got to give up. Give up whatever it takes. Get this guy to the New York Yankees. He's too good of a fit. On base percentage, lefty, average, power, leadership, all of it. It's all there. Is there going to be times when guys don't fully run the first? Yes, it happens. It happens. The problem is when it becomes consistent and the manager doesn't do nothing about it. That's when it becomes a problem. But Soto, again, is everything the New York Yankees should be building around. As Carlos said, this is why I love our prospect guys here at NYYU. They are the best in the business for a reason. 
You gotta have the youth coming up because you have to lock in Soto. You gotta be able to look around. And again, salute to the Yankees. They probably weren't as high on Trey Sweeney as they are on um, Yorbit Vivas. They're a lot higher on Yorbit. Guess what Yorbit can do next year? He can take over for Gleyber Torres. A lot of people believe that. There's been articles and things already written that the Yankees believe that he can hit for the position at second base and be pretty well at doing it. I'm excited. But Juan Soto must stay a New York Yankee. I don't care if you give, I don't care if you give 15 million, 15 years to this dude. Whatever it takes, you got to ensure that Soto is on this club. And guys, there has been a couple of updates. Uh, let me see. Give me one second. As we talked about earlier, it does look like Tommy Canely will start the year on the IL as we expected. As we expected that that was the case. We thought that was going to happen. We do have a lineup today as Anthony Rizzo is officially back in the lineup. That is good news. Torres at second base, Soto in right field, Judge in center, Rizzo DHing, Alex Verdugo in left, Luis Torrens at first base, Austin Wells catching, Roderick Arias playing shortstop, and Jorbit Vivas playing third base. Again, very interesting again there. Um, if Jorbit Vivas was a guy that I believe could really handle third base, I think the Yankees are giving him the chance, I'd be all over this guy starting with the big league club because he's hit enough. He looks good up there. He doesn't look bad in his, in his ABs. He takes professional at-bats. But um, that whole infield situation is going to be very, very interesting for the Yankees. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure there's nothing else. I think we covered everything on that. We did. Perfect. So let's continue on with our voicemails. If there is any news that breaks, guys, you know we got it covered for you right here. Let's keep it going. Good morning. Beautiful day out here where I'm at. Hope everyone's feeling good. Grab your cup of 4Q. Oh, yeah, baby. 4Q to your neighbor. 4Q to your sister. (laughs) No, don't say that to your sister. Hey, yo. But anyway, there's two things that I'm just genuinely curious about. About the curiosity of how stupid some people are. They don't think, these people. What are they doing? But anyway, I see a lot of people talking about Ben Rortvet. Mm-hmm. Making the team over Austin Wells? What, what? Do people really think that's going to happen? No. No, that's not going to happen. Another thing, Trevor Bauer, they're saying, of course, we knew this was going to happen. He pitched good. They're going to say, why doesn't he just get signed? Listen, he's not going to sign. Yankee fans, drop it. He, the Yankees aren't going to sign him. Correct. All right, that's it. Those two things. Is, I have to get that out of the way. Off my chest. Have a great day, everyone. See you later. Appreciate you, my guy. Thank you so much. I think you actually had another one here. Let's get to that one. Luis Hill on a hill calling in again. I got so carried away with people talking about Ben Rortvet and Trevor Bauer. I forgot to even say what I wanted to call for in the first place. Okay. But I I like Clayton Beater. I think he's going to step into that kind of Johnny Burrito type role from last year. Mm, Good point. Fill in for him where we – when he left, we were like, okay, we're kind of going to miss that part. But I really think Clinton yeah. Beater can step into that role and do really well. Again, have a great day, everyone. See you later. No, great, great point. Great point. People kind of laughed at me, but when the Yankees added uh, uh, Johnny Brito in that deal, I sat there and I said, he played a really big role for the Yankees towards the end of last year. He was very, very good. He was very good out the bullpen last year in a multi-inning role for the New York Yankees. And something they could miss this year, but great point on your end. I think Clayton Beater could fill that role extremely well. A guy that comes out there pumping 95, 96, guy with a great slider. Yeah, I think um, I think Clayton Beater could very, very well fit in that role. And you could potentially see a long-term fit in the Yankees bullpen for Clayton Beater. I know there's some people out there that feel like, this guy could still start. This guy could continue to develop that change up a bit and be a three-pitch pitcher, at least an average change to slightly above average, and really be a three-pitch mixed guy and have good stuff. I think Clayton Beater was 
always kind of seen more as a relief pitcher anyway. And I'm not knocking saying that he can't make it as a starter. I'm not saying that. I just think if you look at the way the Yankees are structured right now, Clayton Beater can really be effective for this club out the bullpen and really help them. And I think, well, we don't have to think anymore. We know he is going to be in the Yankees bullpen, just depending on what role is that going to be. Guys, do me a favor. Smacky that likey. Hitty that subby like you've never done before in your life. We are closing in on 23,500 subscribers. We are 39 subs away from 23.5. Very, very thankful for all of you. This is going to be a mammoth of a season for NYYU. Stay tuned. We're working on so much stuff. We even got some more announcements for you guys after the event on 420. 14 likes away from 100. 220 people in here. Come on, guys. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up for us. Let's keep it going. Yo, Pete. Give me Hacksaw. Ho! Ho! Dude, we're just a few days away. Open yes, sir. day. Yes, sir. 4 o'clock Thursday. I'll be here. be good. Hacksaw and uh, Mama Hacksaw are going to be here watching the game. Listen to you on the side. All right. My couple things. One, I said this a few months back. I want a Luis Heal to be the fifth starter. Yep. And I got my wish. You Wanna did. How are you feeling about that? I'm sure you're feeling great about it because the dude is stellar. Um, secondly, <clears throat> my one concern about the rotation is length. They're going to be able to be let pitch. So mm. you know how Boone is always fucking pulling people out so early, and it's very frustrating yep. as a fan to watch, especially when your guys are just pitching like that, right? Mm. But on the other hand, our bullpen is so deep, dude. Do you feel that this year everybody, all the starters are going to pitch less innings due to the fact they feel like they can lean on the bullpen so much more? And do you think that's a positive or a negative? Thanks for all you do, man. Thanks to all the boys. Thank you as well. Where the hell's Dane been, by the way? Anyways, I love you. Have a great day. And Thursday is going to be epic. Later. Yes, no doubt about it. Thursday is going to be absolutely huge. I'm just saying, absolutely huge. No question about it. But um, no, guys, I, I will say this. I will say this really quickly. Um, When it comes to the Yankees bullpen, they got so many options, man. And they got, look, we've been talking about the D word, depth. They got it this year. It's very different than last year. It's very different than previous years. They have depth in both sides, in the bullpen side, in the um, rotation side. You know, over in Mexico today, you're probably going to see Neely come out the pen. You're probably going to see Danny Watson come out the pen. These are guys you want to keep your eyes on if you're a Yankee fan. Um, There are two names right there that can really help this team out of the bullpen this year. But they got depth, man. The Yankees could very much rely on their bullpen a lot this year. And hell, look, last year, I always bring this up because it is it is interesting, right? Last year, if you guys remember, we entered the year last year talking about, holy shit, we got like four top-of-the-line starters in Cole, Rodon, Seve, and Nesta Cortez. Look at the way that turned out for us. We were all really hype. We were all extremely hype. But what the rotation looked like going into last year. And look what it turned out to be. Maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that we will all be surprised. Maybe we are all a little bit shocked. And the Yankees have a better rotation than we thought. It's possible. Anything can happen in baseball. The game's got to be played on the field. And then the depth kicks in. And now you're looking at this club. You're going, this feels different. This feels different. You never know. You never know, guys. Let's keep the voicemails going. Hello, Pete. This is Chief Inspector Cruzo coming live from Connecticut. How you doing? How you doing? Oh. Well, I cannot wait for the Yankee season to start already. You know, I'm very anxious about it. I threw the ball around yesterday in the backyard here where I live. And I'm quite an excellent first baseman if I do say so myself. When I used to play for the Paris Brugere baseball team, 
But you know, that was then, this is now. I cannot wait for this, t- this season to start. So get your gloves, get your beds, get your bills. And let's beat the heck out of Houston, and let's beat the heck out of the Red Sox. And remember, Smacky the Lucky and Hitty the Subby, NYY Underground forever. And remember, folks, like my friend Simon says, Aaron Judge is a gift from God. Well, you have a good day, Pete. You'll hear from me again when the case is solved and the Yankees win the World Series. Au revoir, my friend. Let's get to the next voicemail. Yo, Pete. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? So, I'm curious as to your thoughts on the comparisons around returning from an injury-prone season. The comparisons I'm talking about are 2016 versus 17 with Severino. And then you talk about uh, the time that Luis Heal has missed mm. due to Tommy John surgery. Granted, mm. these are two different types of, sur- of injuries, right. but <clears throat> we're talking about how we project Eel would be coming back and, mm. and what are your expectations for him versus what we saw in Severino after he worked with Pedro Martinez to basically hide his changeup a little better and work on that third pitch. You know, mm. he had the fastball and the slider working for him prior to that. Anyhow, I'll leave it at that. Love and peace to the NYYU family. Take care. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Um, it's interesting, man. Um, I I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Every injury is different. Every situation is different. Everybody's body is different. We all completely understand that. I will say this about Luis Hill. Luis Hill. Gill, Hill, Heal. I'll say this. Not everybody probably puts in the effort that Luis Hill put on put put in. I just remember it, and I know you know he probably doesn't show everything and all that, and 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 puts everything out there. But holy shit, man, this guy worked. I remember talk. You guys remember? I've been I've been saying it all off season. And the Yankees still got Luis Hill. And if you look at his IG, he's been busting it out there. He's looking to get back. He's looking great. Because he posted everything. Giving his glory to God as he does. My man. But he posted everything. Everything of how hard he was working every single day. But I'm just saying. Everybody's different. And he has obviously put in the work. And I can sit here and tell you guys right now, I think Luis Hill is better than he was then after surgery. I think this guy's a guy who made himself better. I think his command has been better. I think his fastball's better. More movement. I think his slider is better. I think his changeup might be one of the best pitches in the Yankee system. Overall, we talked about some DS last night. You look at pure stuff. Who got better pure stuff than Luis Hill on the Yankees? Pure stuff, not pitcher, not all that stuff. Pure stuff to dominate batters. He has it. He got it all. He got the body for it. Can the body hold? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. It's obvious that Luis Severino, his body just has not been able to maintain the injuries. I wish him well this year. I hope he has a solid year for the Mets. I really do. But man, oh man, there is the only thing you can do again with a guy like Luis Hill is go, man, that is impressive. What you've done is impressive. Good for you. Good for you. What you have done is very impressive. Now, let's see it out there. Let's see you continue doing what you've done. He's deserved it. He's rightfully, rightfully deserved it. No question about it. All right, let's get to the next voicemail. Hey, Pete. It's Matt. Macho King has the best voicemails out of all of us here. Um, But on other news, 
How do you think that the Yankees will overall do, especially within the within the within the first sixty days of the season? Mm. For me, I think that the first sixty days will be telling for the New York Yankees run to 28. I look forward to the first game season yes, sir, on Thursday. Thursday. God bless you guys. Thank you. And may God bless the United States of America. All right, guys. Talk to you later. He always scares me with that, man. He goes into the full presidential thing, and I'm like, I got to show some sort of honor to America. May God bless the United States of America. Simonetti, 2024. Coming to a town near you. <laughs> Coming to a town near you. All right, let's get to the next voicemail. Hey, hey how's it be doing over there, Pete? Hey, yes, Coach Jay, what's up, everyone? And it's finally the actual starting baseball season. Have a great day, everybody. God bless. God bless, Eric. Love you, my guy. Thank you so much for calling in. We really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's do this real quick, man. Let, let's take a quick peek at the New York Yankees schedule because I feel like people are kind of overhyping how tough it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't looked at it. But I do believe the first year, I think it's because we're starting against Houston, to be quite honest with you, and people are kind of just panicking. But I really do. I believe that. Let me take a look. Let's take a look here. All right, so we know. They start four against the Houston Astros. All right, cute. We know that already. Diamondbacks for three. Not easy. The Blue Jays, okay. And then the Marlins, not too tough. I don't think that's extremely tough. The Guardians and then the Blue Jays. I don't think that's extremely tough. The Rays, okay. Four against the Athletics. I don't think that's extremely tough. Uh, Three against the Brewers, and then they face Baltimore. Again, I don't think that's extremely tough. They got the Tigers, the Astros again, get it. The Rays again, I get it. The Twins, the White Sox. I don't know what people are going that it's this bad or 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 this tough. I think it's tough. Don't get me wrong, but I don't. I I think a lot of people are kind of going a little wild about this. I think people are going a little crazy um, about this. To be quite honest with you, but. Uh, there you see it, of course, guys, April 20th, you know what that is, NYYU Day at Yankee Stadium, we're going to be on the little scoreboard and all that fun stuff, smacky to likey, we'll be hitting the subby, we'll be doing all that, all right? It's going to be amazing, I can't wait, I can't wait for it, baby. But guys, we are going to get ready to wrap up today's show. I do want to say this really quickly, do me a favor, guys, put it on your calendar right now, 7 p.m. today will be day four of our spring training vlog. And let me tell you something, you do not want to miss day four. It was one of the funnest days we had. It was absolutely wild. All right, you get to see a little bit of another side of our good friend Los <laughs> that maybe you guys haven't got a chance to see yet. Uh, but we had an amazing time. It was extremely fun. Uh, make sure you guys tune in for it. 7 p.m. Do not miss it. I want to see everybody in the chat. I made it later so everybody can kind of get home, settle in, and then go about their day. Um, the last vlog will probably come out uh, Wednesday afternoon is what I'm looking for. So tomorrow afternoon, I literally got to work on it all day today. So right after this. I'm going to go say good morning to the beautiful, lovely, wonderful fiance. And then I'm going to get right to work on the spring, the final spring training vlog and be done with it. But seven o'clock today, folks, do not miss it. I promise you, you're going to get a lot of laughs and you're going to see how awesome this team is and how great we really bond together. There is breaking news. Brian Cashman says that DJ LeMayu is starting the season on the I.L., so again, that is it right there. He is indeed starting on the injured list. 
So just so everybody is aware, done. He is starting on the injured list. That's all. That's all there is to it. We already know that. And it looks like he may be talking now, Cashman, because there was just an update. So I don't know if we're going to get more. Let me just check in with this here real quick and see. I don't want to leave you guys with anything else that may pop out. Uh, okay, so Brian Cashman is telling reporters now, likely to start on the IL. Um, I don't know if there's going to be more conversation right here with Cashman. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe there will be because that news literally just came out. But anyway, guys, I do believe the Yankees should make a trade for an infielder. I, I think they almost have to, in my opinion. But with that being said, you guys are the best. Honestly, there is no fan base like the NYYU fan base. The love, the chemistry among this team and our community is truly uh, second to none. You guys are going to see that more on April 20th in person. I can't wait for it. So, guys, I truly love you all. Thank you so much for your continued support of NYYU. Until next time, guys, we are out. Peace, baby. If there's breaking news, we got you covered. Don't worry about that. But we'll see you later. 7 o'clock. Tune in. Can't make a promise, but I do my best. 25 sitting on 25 racks. Just got started, no, we ain't done yet. But a new crib, that's a goddamn flex. Goddamn flex. Sign that check. Told them last year that I've been up next. Can't take calls, but I send that text. 